advanced laser technology in a portable projector? No Matic show that it is no longer Mission Impossible and it's time to find out how good or bad their new L500 model is. Let's inspect! Hey everybody, really nice to meet you here on the channel where we inspect a lot of cool and interesting tech and today we're gonna talk about projectors. This one is quasi portable projector because it's very small, lightweight yet powerful, but doesn't have an integrated battery inside. Still, I managed to experience some things with such kind of a projector for the first time and it has some features which promise really fantastic performance. So this episode is about covering everything important about the nomadic L500. We're gonna do the unboxing, the first time setup, a walkthrough for the operating system and of course try to discover all the strong and weak sides. So let's dive into it. Lately projectors are gaining popularity and portable and compact projectors seem to be the real deal with most makers trying to offer an attractive model at accessible price. The full HD capable L500 is definitely going to be a tempting choice, especially if you manage to grab it during the crowdfunding campaign or later during a sales campaign. In order to help you to catch the best deal, I've placed a link with more information in the video description area. Given the specs and performance, it's gonna compete with devices like Mogo 2 Pro by XGME, the Samsung Freestyle and some BenQ and Nebula models and basically most similar devices that you can grab for a price of less than $700. Unpacking. I was expecting more compact packaging. Comes in style though. Some of the key features are visible on the box. First thing to take out is the quick start guide. Just a few pages long and totally worth spending the three minutes reading it. Here's the projector. My first impression is that it looks like one of these weird dental stations doing some magic. This totally is not a usual shape for a portable projector and is something like a signature style for a nomadic, trying to innovate and escape from the boring mainstream. A bracket at the bottom is available, plus the so-needed quarter-inch thread for mounting a tripod. There are a few connectivity ports, a USB Type-A connection, a Type-C port, HDMI and the power input. We have to be fair, the whole thing is quite compact. A quick look at the specs shows bright 650 ounce lumen projection capabilities, BT2020 color gamut, 1080p native projected resolution, an AMLogic SLC platform with a quad-core CPU, 2GB RAM, Harman Kardon speakers, auto keystone correction, auto focus adjustment, dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, and it runs a heavily modified Android TV 9 operating system. Yeah, sounds interesting, but let's talk about what actually these specifications mean. And as a starter, the brightness rated at 650 ANSI lumens. This is quite a lot. If we place it side by side with another portable projector, which is outputting a bit less, you can see that there clearly is a difference in terms of colors, contrast, the overall image quality. I think Nomad have done a pretty great job, but there are some good reasons in order to achieve all of that. This projector is among the first supporting the BT2020 color gamut, which is similar to Rec. 709 and DCI-P3, but covers a wider range of colors. And I think looking into all these samples makes it very evident and confirms that actually the colors are a lot more vivid, or at least they can be. BT2020 color gamut is a standard that most projectors are heading to, but it's gonna take time and it's something that makes better sense with 4K projectors. This one here projects at 1080p, which is a bit less, but still there are benefits in terms of image quality. The other great news is that inside we have something like an integrated SCB, meaning that it has a processor, RAM, a bit of storage and has its own operating system. Should you need some extra functions, there's an HDMI input port, so you can attach an Amazon Fire TV stick or a Xiaomi TV stick or anything that you can link through an HDMI port and you need it for its functions. Or you can entirely rely on the integrated operating system and its user interface and I think now is a good time to make a walkthrough. As a starter, this is by far the most pleasant to use interface for a projector I've recently seen. It's tab-based, very functional, even somewhat customizable. 
On the left, there are the input sources, HDMI, USB Type-C, the local storage access and the USB, whichever is present is going to show a white dot on the left side. Then, the file manager, which is simple yet functional, it is the first clue that we actually have Android-based operating system underneath, given the file structure. Then, we have the apps section. Nomadic have selected a number of compatible apps, including Netflix, Disney+, Nick Jr., Twitch and many other popular entertainment apps. And looking at the tiles, you probably notice how much more vivid than usual this projector is. A lot of settings are available and on top, grouped in a way that makes perfect sense. I couldn't find any advanced settings about the projection capabilities. Some other models may let you customize the color space and some other variables, but at this point of time, with the current firmware, such options are not present here. But hey, don't worry, it's because all of these options are available through the quick settings from the remote. And honestly, this is exactly what I've always wanted to see from Android TV. There also is a dedicated Bluetooth speaker mode, really nice to have because it's just off the display and lets you listen to the audio only. As for video performance, well, the colors are stunning. Some people would say that they're kind of oversaturated, but as mentioned, you can configure those on your own. I think it's a good enough evidence about the supremacy of the BT2020 color gamut. MEMC is also supported. It stands for motion estimation, motion compensation, takes care of sharpening where necessary and smoothening transitions between frames. If you want to play a favorite video, you can do that from an external source. Just plug the USB drive with it, open from the file manager and done. In case you prefer another software to run it from, MX Player is present in the App Store. YouTube application is also available, not the original by Google software though. Works fine, has all the features necessary and the usual controls. If you wonder whether the sound is enjoyable, here's how the 7 watt Harman Kardon speaker performs. Next, I've tried to run some benchmarks. As you know, this is the performance of the CPU and the GPU are not among the key strengths, but some basic gaming is possible. For more resource-hungry games, better use an external resource, PlayStation, laptop, whatever you prefer. Don't forget that projectors add a bit of latency to the signal, that's in case you get passionate about it. If at some point you notice lack of focus or clarity, you can calibrate through the dedicated button on the remote. It's one of the very well-designed remote controllers, and although it doesn't come with dedicated buttons for Netflix, YouTube or other streaming services, functions are about right, plus there is key backlight present. If you wonder about the keystone correction responsiveness and the autofocus tuning, here's a quick test for you. Among the other extras, there's a Chromecast function inbuilt, as well as a way to cast from iPhones. So regardless of your smartphone's operating system, you're all set to quickly project content from your device, wirelessly. Before the verdict, I've noted down some areas of improvement with the Nomadic L500 and would like to share them with you. The fan is quite noisy as a starter, you have to listen the audio at high volume, otherwise it's kind of intrusive. Only 2 GB of RAM are present and we're now in 2023 and everybody wants more. No way to power feed through an external power bank and the lack of Google Play services integration was about to be nice to rely on such a function as well. But who knows, it's a software feature, so nobody can drop it at some point. In the end, I think that this very small-sized projector is very likeable and with exception for the fact that the fan is a bit noisy and there is no integrated battery, it's a really fantastic performing small size projector, probably unmatched in terms of image quality for its price niche and scale. And that's everything about this episode. In case you have some other follow-up questions, I'll be happy to respond in the comment section below the video. And right below in the description you can find a link with more information about the product, perhaps a discount and some ways to support the channel. You can do it for free by giving us a like and subscribing and for more ideas you can check the description area. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Michael, the Tech Mishka. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!